uh, and uh, who's had a long career uh, traveling the planet, uh, seeing the Earth. And uh, in this book, um, yeah, he gives his witness statement in the first part of the book, kind of going through, going through uh, various kind of ter decades, turning points in his life. Um, not of his life, but so much of what he visual, what he saw of the planet, uh, and then in the second part, uh, a vision for the future of we're in this state, uh, we're in the Anthropocene, which is human beings have fucked up the planet so so badly that we are like a geological event, we are like an asteroid asteroid having hit this planet, um, killing. Um, thousands upon thousands of thousands of species not just individual spe individual creatures but species just extinct gone uh they're you know uh in the geological record uh there will be a just this this there's there's a sheet of plastic uh will be recorded of one of the records of our existence uh that and a shit ton of uh chicken bones beef bones sort of uh the mono the monoculture that we uh in our efforts of kind of factory farming um both of 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 uh of, of uh plants and of animals that we have wrought um he paints a quite a vivid picture uh Attenborough. he is someone who is he is 94 years old and so he has a good scope there of like this is where we were sort of like when i was when like i was young and this is where we are now and the 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 difference is striking um the um the tipping points that he points out the various tipping points that we are rushing towards uh that if we don't stop uh any one of them could trip off uh feedback loops uh the uh the uh, arctic uh being one the permafrost um, um melting and releasing massive amounts of carbon is one uh, the um, the desertification of uh, the uh, of the Amazon another um, yeah so many things that can we we may stumble right through and uh, we're liable to quite quite surely to stumble through uh, and cause uh, the amount of suffering to ourselves not only just all the creatures uh, that we have um, we so ill treat. Uh, and fauna and, and fauna and flora as well, um, but he does actually do a good job of then saying, "Okay, well, what are what's a vision for the future?" And I mean, I don't think he's saying it's the only one, but talking about really, I think the ones that that, that really kind of put that I, I thought were the most um, interesting were was the idea of um, the donut, the donut theory uh which is there's it's it's basically a thing of like how do we reorder how we economically operate how we operate economically how we ec we operate socially on this planet um because you know capitalism has won the chinese are bigger capitalists than the americans uh and you know are starting to rev up to 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 be you know to catch up with you know the western countries for the amount of destruction that's been going on i mean you can say a lot of things about the chinese but they're actually because of where they've come on the scene are actually probably more with it than we are um that that way not to say that there isn't massive amounts of greed and stuff like that because we have an orientation of growth everything has to grow 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 and that's something that's like massive growth capitalism agree you know it's it's there's a certain orientation of how our human society is structured today that can't is is incompatible with our survival um so you know this isn't just about oh we need to recycle a bit this is we need to fundamentally uh reorder reorder our societies reorder our views on wealth on uh distribute on the distribution on growth on um so much yeah on, on so many things on uh, you know uh it's it's daunting um but it's also it's a mind shift it's like it's one of these things of it's like we have the tools can we change because if we can't change 
where the plant the planet is going to change change it for us and it's um all the horrible things that we've done we've been we've taken out so much from this planet it's going to come due uh if it isn't already coming due already so um yeah yeah um it was a short short uh book i listened to it on audio but um it was it was good it was good because i think the 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 thing with these books is it's like it's a it's not a pretty picture it's bleak but um it's also saying and and despair and um and nihilism is not the answer uh that is as irresponsible as anything else and um looking at different different models different ways of doing things uh, New Zealand came up a couple of times, which I'd be interested to look into of just, and you know, I'm sure that's not a perfect system in it, as anyways, but it was one that was kind of used as like, maybe these are different ways of doing things, not, not measuring the, um, success of a society by its GDP, uh, which, you know, there's, there's, you know, the, there's an economic, the, the massive economic, uh, changes, economic theory, economic orientation is going to have to happen, have to happen. Which makes me, I mean, it makes me hopeful in one way for the future that um, hopefully, hopefully, if I'm alive at 94, uh, I will look look around and I won't recognize this society. That would be the best case scenario. I will not recognize this society. We'll have so fundamentally changed things. Uh, if I'm unlucky enough that that do, if I don't, if we, those changes don't happen and I'm unlucky enough to live to 94, um, it's still going to be, it's still going to be a radically changed society, but it's going to be a brutal one. Uh, <laughs> and then maybe I'll, you know, take up smoking and drinking uh, and uh, try and die at 60. Um, that would be the nihilistic thing. I want to live to 94 and see, see this, see this planet uh, on a completely different path. Um, and, you know, we we are slow to change and that's that you know just like i'm i'm in my i'm i'm 53 52 53 now it's like will you know 40 years can we do it could could it actually change that much in, in 40 years um i'm always surprised when change happens how quickly it happens uh usually because it's nothing 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 and then suddenly it seems to change and that's usually because it's there's a whole bunch of subtle things happening outside of my ken that suddenly click into place uh and i i um yeah yeah i mean i am a humble pleb uh and um uh, these these are these are things that are going to are tackled by people a lot smarter than me um and um I hope some of those people are the ones that are in charge and, and not some of the dough heads. Uh, and um, I mean, and you know, there's some of this is like, there's really brilliant people, but we're in a, we're, we're, we've structured ourselves even into democracies on a very short term thinking. Um, so, you know, how do we get long term thinking? How do we think? Yeah. 40, 50 years ahead versus uh, to the next election. All good questions. I don't have the answers. But but uh, David Adbert does a really good job of uh, bringing some of this stuff up, uh, at least for somebody who's who doesn't really pay it that much attention to, to this stuff. Um, but uh, reading books like this actually is like, oh, OK, I can actually read a book like this and not want to shoot myself. I'll, <laughs> I'll leave it there on that happy note. All right. More videos later.